rest of the speakers. We actually have a little bit of padding in this session, fortunately. Um, our next speaker is my colleague, Sarah Ann Kennedy from Dublin Institute of Technology. Sarah graduated from the MLIS in UCD in 2010, and she's been with DIT Library Services since 2006, working in libraries supporting the College of Business and the College of Arts and Tourism. She's currently the subject librarian for Media and Law, and she's interested in engaging and supporting students through blended learning. So the title of Sarah's presentation is Digital Collaborations, Supporting Transition into Third Level with an Online Marketing Tool. Hi everyone. Um, so as Alison said, I'm based in Angel Street and I'm part of a team that supports the College of Business and then the School of College of Arts and Tourism, but that's the School of Media and the School of Law. So I'm going to talk today about library learning um, and how collaboration with academic staff played a part in developing the project and then how it affected student engagement. So um, what is library learning? So it's a digital information pack aimed at first year undergraduates to support transition into third level. We're using the online marketing tool MailChimp um, and the good thing about MailChimp is it's actually free for the first 2,000 subscribers so it was perfect for an, uh, um, a pilot project. Um, it consists, library learning itself consists of 10 personalised mail-outs sent throughout the whole academic year and the mail-out content ranges from an introduction to library services, library resources, library staff and again then as it goes on throughout the year we're looking at more in-depth content um, to support our information literacy programme. Um, and MailChimp allows us to send branded and kind of design-led content um, that's kind of more interesting to look at than say just a generic email that you might send out. Um, and we're also promoting then other academic um, supports like the Academic Writing Centre and the Maths Learning Centre. So how does this fit in with our existing information literacy programme? We have an established information literacy programme in Angel Street. The level of engagement differs from course to course. So a large number of first year undergraduates, we see them for just one hour in induction week at the start of term. Um, and unfortunately we don't have enough staff to see every single student the way we would, to, would do. Um, and the downside of only seeing the students in induction week is that a lot of them are experiencing information overload at this point and our message can get lost. They just don't take in what we say and then it's up to them to approach us themselves um, if they need help or support. Um, some courses then have embedded sessions and we see these students like that for one hour but then we wouldn't see them again until well into the second semester um, and we'd see them for tailored face-to-face -face sessions. Um, as much as I'd like to think with my, my teaching um, and my classes that the most exciting hour that the, or three hours that the students might spend with me, the reality is that a lot of them are bored in the session. They don't see the value of the session at the time. It might be up to three or four weeks before their assignment is due and they just don't take it in. Um, they're operating on like point of need or just in time basis. Um, also as well, my experience is they don't ask questions. We give them an opportunity to ask questions, but for a myriad of reasons, they just don't. Um, so we don't have a, we don't really know if they're understanding what we're we're teaching them in the session. So we also provide online and off-campus support um, via social media, our blogs, and our Ask a Librarian services. And while these are effective, our reach again is limited. Um, if you compare student enrollment numbers. Not enough for following us on social media and um, with our blogs, it can sometimes feel like a one-way conversation. Um, so overall, it's difficult to know if you're reaching those who actually need it. So library learning was developed to maintain contact with students we might only see once during indu induction and also to bridge the gap between those we meet in embedded sessions um, and to reinforce what we've covered in face-to-face -face sessions to provide, if you will, a, an asynchronous, asynchronous learning environment. Um, rather than waiting for the students to come to us to ask for help um, or going to our website or our online guides, we're reaching out to them in an informal and direct and personalised and friendly way. And the idea, I suppose, is to bring the library to them wherever they are when, and to suit their point of need. Um, overall, DIT is looking at the first year experience and supporting student transition into third level. So library learning um, helps to transform induction into a year long process rather than just one hour at the start of the term. Um, so where does the collaboration come in? We ran a pilot project running from September 2015 to May 2016. We selected two groups of undergraduate students, first year students, 
one from the School of Marketing, and which had 84 students, and the other from the School of Journalism, which had 52 students. So we have a different relationship with each school with regard to information literacy, so we wanted to see how this affected engagement with the mail-outs. Library staff put together a draft schedule of 10 mail-outs in line with the academic calendar, and we met then with academic staff in each of the schools to, dis to discuss content and timing and so on. So with the School of Marketing, we have embedded sessions. We see students in the second semester, like I said, for three library sessions that are directly linked to their assignment. Students have to submit a reflective blog to the library about their own search process, and the librarians are then involved in correcting the library component of their final submission. We're added as instructors on web courses, so we see what their, their lecture content is week to week. Um, we know exactly what and how they're being assessed, and we're able to incorporate all this into the mail-outs. After each of the three sessions, we send tailored mail-outs then to cover, reinforce what was covered in the sessions. After correcting the reflective blog as well, we could see the common errors that were appearing in the search process, and we were able to address this again. We gave feedback back to academic staff and then um, include, address these in the mail-outs after discussion. So MailChimp provides us with data on student engagement, and it's quite powerful data. It goes right down to the individual level of engagement. So really, we're not, we weren't so much interested in how many times they were accessing the mail-out. We were interested in those students that had zero engagement with the mail-outs. Um, the data was then sent to academic staff a week after each mail-out was sent, and then they could uh, then match it to their own stats from web courses and also from their own individual knowledge of each student. Um, when the engagement levels started to dip, um, we again, we discussed the possible reasons why this was happening with the students, and this is some of the feedback from the academic staff. So you can see there, like, perceived good students. Why aren't they engaging? Do they not need the mail out? Um, so again, some of the staff then decided to send this feedback on, to communicate this feedback, or the staff data, sorry, onto the students themselves, so they could see in black and white, oh, I haven't opened those mail outs. Maybe I should go and actually have a look at them. Um, and this encouraged them then to engage with the supports that we have in, um, in the library. Again, we also revised our original feed schedule in, from feedback from the academic staff and made changes to content um, based on their feedback. So here we have the average overall open rate uh, for the School of Marketing versus the average mark for the library component on the final assessment or assignment. So overall, those who engaged at a high level with the mail outs were able to demonstrate the skills they'd gained in their assignment and performed well. Um, with the School of Media, unfortunately, we don't have the same, um, we didn't achieve the same level of collaboration. We, get an, we don't have embedded sessions with them, we get an opportunity to meet the students for the, in, um, for the first year uh, for one hour in induction week, and then we're lucky if we get them in for um, a library session. We did get an opportunity to present to the pilot to staff at the beginning of the year, and the first year tutor did lend his support, but again, it was limited in comparison to the School of Marketing. We didn't get to meet the students, like I said, until well into the second semester for one session, but it, it, they, it didn't, I knew even teaching the class, it kind of wasn't resonating with them. Um, and we had no idea of lecture assignments or due dates, not for want of trying to find out that information. Um, we continued to send data to the academic staff in the school, but we failed to get any feedback. Um, and in defense of the, the School of Media, um, I know they have resourcing issues themselves. Um, so I think maybe part of it was that they just didn't have the time and like that we don't have the same relationship with them. So if we compare the two levels of engagement between two groups, so mail outs like six, seven, eight, the spike there for mail out eight is actually when their assignment is due. Um, so it's quite funny to see that it jumps up there when they're working on that point of need just in time basis. Um, I think myself that the opportunity to collaborate the staff definitely had an impact on um, the engagement with the student, um, with the mail outs. Um, they had more relevance. They, um, and while I don't think that a face to face session can ever be replaced, I think that this is a great tool to support and reinforce what is covered in a face to face session and to be used as a marketing tool to promote our services. So, moving forward, oh, this was feedback from academic staff in the School of Marketing. 
um, and it reflected how they thought it was a positive addition to the existing program. We did include a short survey for the students in the final ma mail out to get feedback. Um, we didn't get any responses, which was disappointing. But again, this could be about timing. Um, they had just finished their exams. They were already in summer mode. While there was kind of a leap in reading it, um, I think they were like, I'm out of here, see you next September, you know. So um, we'd next year, we'll hope to look for feedback throughout the whole year. Um, and then moving forward, we'll be reviewing content again with the academic staff. We'll be looking at the timing of the mail outs. Maybe the academic calendar isn't the way to go. Maybe we need to look at the school's own individual calendar. Um, we'll also be using this comparative data to try and encourage the School of Media to collaborate for, uh, further with us um, and to try to convince them that this will help their students directly. Um, and we'll also be including another uh, business course that has embedded sessions to see if we get the same, uh, different or same results. And we'll be looking at marketing and promoting the project on social media and posters and online, because this is, we haven't done this so far. Okay, thank you.